Let's do part B of the exercise 1.2 of the introduction part of the course. Here first, let's write all the atoms of this program P. So we have diet, coffee, lemon, sugar, milk, and tea. And all of them occur in the head of the rules, as you can see. Now, let's find the models of this program as we did before, and among the models, let's find those that are stable. So here, we have that initially, we don't know anything about the atoms of the program, so, but what we know is that, for example, if there's some model of the program, either it will not have sugar or it will have sugar. So we can look for the models that do not have sugar and on the other side for the ones that have sugar. So let's underline this like that and let's go to the program. So if we do not have sugar, then we know that we should have diet for an interpretation to be a model. And then let's see here. So if we do not have sugar, then this rule here will be satisfied. We don't have to worry anymore about it because if there's no sugar, then the body is not satisfied. So any interpretation that doesn't have sugar will be a model of it. And let's see where... where so what I'm doing now is looking, if we have no sugar, check for the rules, check for the occurrences of this sugar. Hmm? and then reason about those occurrences. So here, sugar occurs in the head, and it is not in our set. So then we know that if sugar is not in a set that is going to be a model, then coffee cannot be in that set. Because if coffee was in that set, then sugar should also be in the set. Right? So then what we know that coffee cannot be in a model where sugar is not there. So then we can erase this here, and then this rule is also satisfied. I'm marking them like that. Now, the three occurrences of, of sugar, I've marked them, so there's no more reasoning about sugar to do. Then about this diet that we deduce. So if we have diet, we also have tea from this rule. If diet, we also have tea. So we can, for our, the reasoning is as follows. So if diet is in a model, then tea should also be in that in that model. Good, and diet does not occur anywhere, anything else, so no more reasoning to do about it. Now, about coffee, we say we are building a model where coffee does not occur, so here this makes the rule not satisf um, satisfied. It, if coffee is not in the, in the set, then this rule is satisfied, but here we can also do some reasoning if coffee is not in the in in a set then t should be in the set for this rule to be satisfied but this is indeed the case that we have t here so we satisfy this rule because this is not mm, this is not satisfied the body the rule is not satisfied so then the whole rule is satisfied and then if we have t we should have lemon then from okay wait a moment i was a bit too quick here we were talking about about um, about coffee. So here we have that coffee also occurs in this rule, and okay, it doesn't affect because sugar already was not in the rule. So now, what else is left? Now we have to check the occurrences of T. You see, so we are doing this reasoning with with every piece of knowledge that we obtain. Maybe we can achieve some new conclusion. So if a model has T it should also have lemon. So then we can complete it like this. And with tea and lemon, this rule is satisfied, and we are fine. So now, given that I have been writing here these dots to represent that the interpretation satisfies those rules, then we know that given this, interp this interpretation satisfies all the rules, so it is a model. Good, so then we can go to the other side. Okay, and then, well, for this, I have to 
clean all this, excuse me for a second. Okay, I'm back to work. So then, if we don't have, if we do have sugar, then this condition is not satisfied. In, in fact, what we can already say is that is think a bit in, ter in terms of the reader. So if sugar, be, if there's a model and sugar, if there's an interpretation that contains sugar, then this rule will not belong to the reader. So we can, I will delete it like this so that then we can reason also about the reader. The rule will disappear, uh, will not occur in the reader of any set that contains, contains DS. Then let's see, with sugar, it also appears at this point, and it also appears in this head, so this rule is satisfied. There's, um, it, we know that if we have sugar, any set that contains sugar will be a model of, of, of this rule here. Right, so these are the occurrences of sugar, and we cannot deduce anything else, so we are having to keep reasoning by, by cases. So let's try now with, with red. So let's say that we will look for the models where we have sugar and we do not have tea, and the ones where we have sugar and we have tea. So let's start with this case. If we, have, if we do not have tea, then we should have coffee. And if we have coffee, then we, okay, then this rule is, is satisfied. If we have, let's see before about tea. So if we do not have tea, then this rule is, is satisfied. And tea, okay, tea also occurs here in these two heads. And for if an interpretation doesn't contain tea for being a model, it should not contain lemon and diet. So we can do this kind of reason. And then in this way, these two rules are satisfied. And then what happens with the third one is that, we, sorry, with, the, with this here, is that if we have coffee and we have sugar, then we should also have milk. Good. So then uh, this has been quick. So we know then we have built this interpretation that is indeed a model because it satisfies all rules. I've been adding these dots here on the left whenever it was sure that we were satisfying this rule no matter what things would be true or false um, afterwards. So let's just do it for, for, for one time, go rule by rule. So this rule is satisfied because coffee is there and this rule, the second rule is satisfied because T is not there. The third rule is satisfied, sorry, the fourth rule is satisfied because sugar is there. The fourth because milk is there. The fifth and the sixth, sorry, I'm, I'm making a bit of a mess with the numbers, but I hope you understand what rules I'm talking about. And these two last ones um, are satisfied because lemon and diet do not belong to, to our set. Good, so then let's go to this other side. And for this, I have to clean a bit the program. So wait a sec. Okay, now we can continue. So we have sugar, and then we are looking for interpretations where apart from sugar, tea is also there. So if we have tea, then we have lemon. And you see the second rule, it will disappear from the reduct because um, uh, it has not T in the body, but we have T, right? These two things. And T also occurs in these two rules. And if T occurs there, then any interpretation that has S, T, and L will be a model of, of these last two rules. And then, Okay, this I should also add the dot. And then we have just left this, this third, this rule here that says that milk, if coffee and sugar. So, but we still don't have any value for, 
to know the value of, of coffee. Okay, so we cannot deduce anything else. So now let's then let's continue with this reasoning by cases. So now we con, uh, we are looking for a model where we have S, T, and L. So, so those okay. Let me move the T to here because otherwise it looks a bit confusing, or maybe to to below like this. So then. Yeah, we can reason as follows. If we are looking for an interpret for models that have ST and L, so some of them may either they do not have coffee or they have coffee. So then if we do not have coffee, then the interpretation satisfies this rule because coffee will not appear there. And then it actually what we see from from the just looking at what we have here is that uh, given the, the given what we know at this point that we have st l and we don't have the c the the program is all the rules of the program are satisfied no matter the value of diet that we are missing and the value of coffee right so here in these two first i didn't write the the dots but whenever i delete them it means that they are satisfied because the body is not satisfied so then we are fine with respect to this rule and you see here we had sugar and here we had tea. Then this means that we can extend the, the, the model that we are building on this path either with nothing or with milk or with diet or with milk and diet. Okay, I hope you understand what I what I what I I think I should make it more explicit because I will use this notation afterwards, so it's good if, if it's clear for you. What I'm saying is that up to this point, we have this model, uh, models STL, STLM, STLD, and STLDM, right? Okay, now let's go to the, to the other side. Let me erase here what we added when we had coffee. So now what happens is that is that coffee is indeed there. So with this um, <clears throat> with this um, with this rule, okay, nothing happens. But with this rule, we have coffee and sugar, so we should have milk. And then what is left here is this diet that it doesn't matter the value because given that we have T, we are fine with respect to this rule. And given that we have sugar, we are also fine with respect to this rule. So then here we would have the two options like with the empty set and with, with uh, diet. So this gives us STL. C M and S T L C M D. Okay, so then now we have to check this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight models of the program. So now for each of these models of the program, you we could check whether they are stable using the definition of a stable model, right? Building the reader or and checking whether the 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 consequences of the reader equal the set that we started with. However, these are a lot, so maybe we can even do more reasoning using this property that if X is a set of is a stable model, then all the atoms in the stable models must have some proof in the reader. So let's uh, let's try to reason with this in mind. And first, let me clean the program for you. Let's go then. So, for let's consider then this model where we have D, L, and T. So when we do the reader, we also only have to consider these two rules, as because those are the one only ones where where negation occurs. So, in this case, sugar does not belong. Okay, so let me. So we are here. Then sugar does not belong to the set. So. So the, the literal disappears from the body, but T 
t belongs to the set, so the rule disappears. And then here, um, actually, what uh, I think what we can do already here is to is to is to find the consequences of this program, which should be quite easy. So we have diet. So with diet we have t, and with t we have lemon. And with yeah lemon tea, and then we are left with these two rules there about sugar and milk. But given that we do not have um, coffee or sugar, then that's it. So in mm, let me just do this again so that it is this is clear to you. So this is the reduct of this program, and then from here we have diet, and from diet we get the tea, and with the tea we get the lemon, and with the lemon here we get the tea again, but with the tea we already have it, and then uh, we cannot apply these, do, these rules here anymore. So then uh, the, the consequences of the redact equal the set, so then you, we can already say that this is a stable model of the program. Now let me clean this. And let's go to the to the next interpretation. So here we know this is a model. Now let's have a look at this one where you have S, C, and the M. So in this case, um, the reduct, given that we have S, this rule disappears, and given that we do not have T, this uh, <clears throat> this uh, not t disappears from the rule, and we just have a fact coffee in the redact. Then, if we find the, if we look for the consequences of the program, we have coffee, and with coffee we have sugar, and with coffee and sugar we have milk, and um, and I think that's it, right? Coffee, sugar, milk. The other rules do not fire, so we are left with coffee, sugar, milk, which is indeed what we had here, coffee, sugar, milk. So it turns out then that the interpretation that we wanted to check is the corresponds to the consequences of the redact of the program. So then we know that this is a stable model of the program. Right, now let's... Clean it. And let's go now to this side where we have S, T, and L. Something that we can do already at this point where we have S, T, and L. And this is why I want to, I said before that we could be a bit more clever and reason about the 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 the, the program even before we have the models or before we check the models, is that we can already do the redact for this part, right? Because we already know the values of sugar and tea. So then we know that sugar and tea will be belong to, to, this interpret to these models that we have here. So for all of them, the redact will not have these two rules. Hmm? Then, it's even without going to look at, at what is here below, what we know is that the consequences of this program are empty because we don't even have a fact to start with, right? So then think a bit about it. What we know at this point is that we cannot prove any atom of an interpretation that contains sugar and tea. Because if we have sugar and tea, then these rules disappear from the reduct, and then we are left with this, and these rules do not allow us to prove anything. So then we can be clever and say, look, yes, these are models, but they are not stable. And these two that we have here are the stable models of the program. Let's write them here, D, T, L, and C, and yes, S, C, M. 
Okay, good. So then let's move on to the next one. 